high grades, three, fours, and fives. So let's get started. Go grab your doodle books, grab your uh, coloring sheets, colors, whatever you need for this read aloud. And we'll be reading chapter three of our book, otherwise known as Sheila the Great. So let's get started. I got into bed. My room was very dark. I'm not used to sleeping all by myself in the dark. I closed my eyes, but nothing happened. So I got out of bed and turned on the light. That was a little better. Soon the house was quiet. I knew everyone else was sound asleep. I tossed around for a while. There I tried, lying on my back. I looked up at the ceiling. I tried to think of something funny, something that would give me a good dream. That's when I saw the spider. He was running across my ceiling. I hate spiders. One time Peter Hatcher put a fake spider in my, de in my desk at school. When I took out my English book, there it was. But I knew it was a phony right away. So I held it by one leg and took it up to Miss took it took it up to Mrs. Haver. Just look what Peter Hatcher put inside my desk. I said, shaking the spider. Mrs. Haver screamed so loud she scared the whole class and Peter Hatcher had to stay after school for three days. I looked at my ceiling again. The spider was still there, and this one was not phony. Go away, spider, I whispered. Please go away and don't come back. But the spider didn't move. He was right over my head. Suppose he falls on me, I thought. Suppose he's the poisonous kind, and when he falls, he bites he when he falls, he bites me. Maybe I should put my head under the covers. Then if he falls on me, it won't matter. No, that's not good either. He could crawl inside the covers and get me anyway. I could just picture Peter Hatcher telling the kids at school, Did you hear about Sheila Tubman? She got bitten by a poisonous spider on her first night in Terrytown in 20, in 20 seconds. She was dead. I jumped out of my bed and ran down the hall to my parents' room. Daddy was snoring. I touched him on the shoulder. He sat right up in bed. What, what, what is it? He asked. It's just me, Daddy. I told him, Sheila, what do you want? It's the middle of the night. I can't sleep, Daddy. There's a spider on my ceiling. Mom rolled over. She made a noise like, uh, shush, Daddy said. Go back to bed. I'll get it in the morning. But Daddy, he could fall on me. Maybe he's poisonous. Oh, all right, Daddy said, kicking off the covers. We walked down the hall together. How did you notice a spider on your ceiling in the middle of the night? Daddy asked. I have my light on. Daddy didn't ask me why. When we got to my room, he said, okay, where's your spider? At first, I didn't see him, but then he started running across my ceiling. There he is. I pointed. You see? Daddy picked up one of my shoes. Hurry, I said. Daddy stood on my bed, but when he smacked my shoe against the ceiling, the spider ran the other way. I tried to help. I gave him directions. That's it, I called. Now just a little to the left. No, 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 now to the right. Hit him, Daddy, hit him now. Daddy missed every time. He was running up and down my bed, but the spider ran faster. Just as Daddy said, I give up, he got him. Squish! That was the end of my spider. There was a big black mark on the ceiling. But I felt a whole lot better. Now, would you please go back to sleep? Daddy said, I'll try. And if you find anything else unusual, tell me about it in the morning. Okay, I said, snuggling under the covers. I think I fell asleep then. But a few hours later, I woke up. I heard this really scary noise. It sounded like, woo-hoo, woo, woo. I didn't know what to do. I buried my head under the pillow, but that didn't help. I could still hear it. I thought about that, it, what it might be, a ghost or a vampire or even an ordinary monster. I got up and ran back down the hall. Daddy was snoring much louder now. This time I walked around to mom's side of the bed and shook her a little. She jumped up. Oh, Sheila, she said when she saw who it was. You scared me. I'm sorry, I whispered. What is it? It's a noise in my room, I said. Go back to sleep, mom told me. It's nothing. How do you know? I asked. You haven't heard it. It sounds like a ghost. There aren't any ghosts. Please, Mom, please come and see. Oh, all right. 
she put on her robe and we went down the hall to my room. Well, Mom said, where is your noise? Just wait, I told her. She sat down on my bed and yawned. Soon it started again. Woo! Woo! You see? I said, throwing my arms around my mom. I could tell from her face that she didn't like the noise either. You want me to go wake Daddy? I asked. No, not yet. Mom said, first, I'll have a look around myself. Hand me that baseball bat in the corner. For what? I asked, just in case, Mom said. I gave Mom the bat. She held it like she was ready to use it. We waited until we heard the noise again. Woo-hoo! coming from outside, Mom said. So it's an outside ghost, I told her. She went to the window. She stood there for a minute before she started to laugh. What's funny? I asked. Oh, Sheila, just look. I hid behind her and peeked out the window. There was a beautiful silver moon. There was also Jennifer with her head held high. She was making those noises. What is she doing? I asked. Is she crazy? She's baying at the moon, Mom said. What's baying? It's like singing. You mean she's going to stand there and make that ghost noise all summer? I think so, Mom said. I told you to get rid of her, didn't I? I said, who needs her? Who needs her making scary noises at me? Come on, Sheila, Mom said, putting the baseball bat back in the corner. Get into bed. She tucked me in. I felt very tired. Now go to sleep. I'll try, I said. When Mom left, I heard the noise again. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, shut up, you silly dog. I called, and she did. Chapter ended. Okay, so we are going to move to chapter four in our next read aloud, and I will see you next time. Bye.